All right. So the first landmark in wrist joint palpation is the radial styloid process. For palpating the radial styloid process, what you need to do is just see the forearm in anatomical position. Just pronate it. The lateral component as you move down the radius bone, bone and distal at the distal nose point just before you get a dip. So you are moving like laterally and just the dip is there. Just proximal to the dip. This pointed process is what we call the radial styloid process. Likewise, on the medial aspect, as you move down the ulna and you get a dip here. Just proximal to this, this bony prominence is what we call the ulna styloid process. So this is the radial styloid process and the ulna styloid process, right? Now, the third landmark is the scaphoid bone. For palpating the scaphoid bone, you need to see the anatomical snuff box. To palpate the anatomical snuff box, tell the patient to take the thumb up and out. So this, you can see these two bulging tendons, this and this. So this, these are the tendons of extensor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis longus. Now, this area is called the anatomical snuff box. In the anatomical snuff box, if you go deep inside this, so moving down the first metacarpal and in the anatomical snuff box and this, this is the scaphoid. So this scaphoid, if you hold it here, so with your thumb and make a pincer grip like this on the palmar aspect. So this complete thing is the scaphoid bone. Now to confirm that it is a scaphoid bone on the palmar aspect, you can feel this bulging component of the scaphoid. That is what we call the scaphoid tubercle. This might be tender in some people or the other. To confirm the scaphoid tubercle, you can tell the person to take the wrist up and radially deviate it a bit. So take it up and radially deviate. So this tendon, this bulging tendon, here, this goes like this. It attaches to the tubercle of the scaphoid, the scaphoid tubercle. So just move along this tendon and up and feel this scaphoid tubercle. The, how to confirm that it is a scaphoid tubercle that you are palpating? Just hold it and move the wrist radially and ulnarly. You'll feel that the tubercle is moving along with the wrist movement. So this is the scaphoid tubercle. But if you are not at the right place, so you might be a bit distally at the trapezium tubercle. And if you move the wrist at the trapezium tubercle, you will feel that the bulging point is not moving at all. So this is the trapezium tubercle and the proximal one is the scaphoid tubercle, right? Now, along with this, in this anatomical snuff box, if you don't go very deep, very proximally, just distal to the scaphoid and proximal to the carpometacarpal joint here is the trapezium. The trapezium bone of the distal carpal row lies here and here is the scaphoid at the proximal most portion of the anatomical snuff box. Now, if you need to palpate the carpal, that is capitate. So capitate is in line with the third metacarpal. So here is your third metacarpal from here to here. This. Now this third metacarpal, the distal most point is this and the proximal most point is this. So just proximal to third metacarpal is the capitate bone. So this capitate is here. And moving proximally to the capitate is the lunate. So just proximal to the capitate is the lunate bone here. On the palmar aspect, what you can mark out is just medial to the scaphoid tubercle, moving medially, this portion is the lunate. Now how to confirm that it is a lunate? 
tell the person to flex the wrist in pronation you'll see this bulging por portion this is the lunate bone right and as you normalize the bone as you take it in neutral position there's no bulge and as you take it down it bulges out it pops out so this is the lunate now the next bone to palpate in this area is the pisiform or the pisiform some people call it so pisiform bone lies on the medial most aspect of the distal palmar crease this portion so this is the pisiform the medial most bone carpal bone of the wrist joint so just you can palpate it here it is a small sesamoid bone like your patella and at the same time this can be moved like this you can move it just tell the person to relax his forearm and you can move the pisiform like this and even if you just flex the wrist a bit it can be moved more easily like this right so this is the pisiform so if you move distally and radially from the pisiform you will find a bulging component here in the hypothenar eminence that we call the hook of the hamate literally it's like a hook so you can palpate just distally and radially so just move distally and radially in the hypothenar eminence and here is the hook of the hamate and literally i'm telling you this hook of hamate is quite tender in some people because you dig deep into the skin and down towards the bone so it might be tender in some people or the other now so scaphoid hamate pisiform capitate lunate so what is left we have the trapezoid and trapezoid lies just lateral to the pisiform so just here is the pisiform here is the lunate and you just come here here is the triquetrum bone and likewise if you just pronate it and move medially from the scaphoid so here is the scaphoid and here is the lunate and move laterally towards the triquetrum like this right last but not the least is the trapezoid bone trapezoid is the one that you start from the trapezium you go down back into the anatomical snuff box palpate the trapezium go towards the proximal to the third metacarpal palpate the capitate in between these two this area is what we call the trapezoid bone area so this was the surface marking of the wrist joint structures last but not the least we have five metacarpals the first metacarpal the second metacarpal from here to here the third metacarpal the fourth metacarpal and the fifth metacarpal then we have 14 phalanges 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 and 14 and this way you complete your wrist and hand palpation if you get any doubt in any of these structures just let us know in the comments and if you like the video hit the like button take care thank you